be a part of this service. Uh, we want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in online with us. And what I want to do right now is a little bit different tonight. I, I, I don't know that I've ever done this format before, but I have with me Stevie McDonald. Most of you probably know him. Um, our online viewers may or may not know Andrew Waters. He's our youth pastor here. Um, I just wanted to sit down with these guys, and I wanted to ask them a few questions, kind of interview style things, and, and I wanted them to be, um, just to give you what the Lord has done in their heart and in their lives, and I'm going to ask them what their favorite scripture is, and well, we'll get to that in a moment, but before we do that, Stevie, would you open us up in prayer, sir? Dear Lord, we want to thank you for letting us come here tonight. I want to thank you for the baptismal service that's fixing to happen. And thank you for everybody that's given their heart to you, and I want to thank you for everything you've done in our church family and all of our personal lives. Amen. Amen. Y'all, he's about to throw up. <laughs> he, he's nervous, but no, he's done started sweating. He's about like me when he gets up here, all right? So anyway, let's, let's kick it off like this. I'll start with Brother Andrew. Um, what is your all-time most favorite scripture in the Bible? that you lean on, that you trust, that gets you through anything that you're going through? Uh, well, we talked about this a little bit the other day, but my favorite scripture has always been Isaiah 40, 31. And the scripture says that they that wait upon the Lord will find new strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will walk and not grow weary. They shall run and not faint. And, you know, I think a lot about, um, you know, that scripture, they waiting on the Lord, being patient, um, that's something that's very hard for me. It does not come natural. I, I like to rush things a lot of times. Sometimes I hate being patient. But I think about, you know, I was thinking about this the other day of, you know, kind of where my life uh, started out growing up. You know, a lot of people know my story. No, I didn't have the greatest upbringing. But um, I think about where my life was and where it is now and just watching what God has done. And all that has come from just being patient and waiting on him and letting him do things in his timing. Um, God's timing is perfect. A lot of times we rush ourselves into situations that we really don't need to be in. And when we're faithful to wait on him, um, he is faithful to see us through. Absolutely. I 100% I agree with that. You can tell he's a preacher, right? He just, just gets it in his mind and he goes. So let's jump over here to Stevie. What is your favorite scripture or the scripture that you use that, that, that God brings you through stuff with? Psalms 32.5. It says, finally, I confessed all of my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Amen. Amen. What so, that means to yeah, me, what that means to me is finally, after all these years and all these, I'm sorry, all these different times of trying and trying and trying, and now I know. That it's nothing that I can do myself unless I turn it over to God. Amen. And I finally have learned that God's grace is sufficient for me. In the past, I would get saved, be on fire for God. I'm talking about living right. Then I would fail. And as soon as I failed, I quit because I didn't understand that God's grace was there for when I failed to get me back to where I need to be. And I finally have learned that, and it's just changed everything. I'm going to fail. We all going to fail. Nobody in this room is not going to sin. We are all going to sin. But God's grace is there for us for when we do sin, that we can step right back in where we were, and we didn't lose nothing. We can't abuse his grace, but it is there for us when we need it. And it's just taken me 10 years to understand that well. But I do understand it now, and it was always there. I just didn't know how to use it. Yeah, amen. That's so, yeah, go ahead. That's, that's so good. And so what that reminds me of is in the book of Romans, chapter 8. It says, therefore, there now is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And there's nothing more that Satan would love to do but to jump on us with condemnation. I can promise you this. Jesus will never send condemnation to you. He will never do anything to drive a wedge between you and him. 
And so if you're feeling that condemnation, if you're like we all do, Stevie did, Brother Andrew did, I do too. I feel that condemnation sometimes, but we have to recognize it as being a scheme and a trick of Satan, the enemy, and we have to, to squash it. We have to identify it and we have to kick it out because if we don't, then we'll fall back into that repeated trap over and over and over. And so let's go back to Brother Andrew. When was the defining moment for you? And then once you realize that defining moment, what has changed about your life? Uh, well, that, um, you know, that, that's actually pretty easy for me because um, Dawn and I, we just celebrated our eight-year anniversary the other day, and uh, it was great. But I think about when, when her and I first started dating, and I was kind of, um, I knew the Lord was kind of leading me back to pursue my call in ministry. I knew he was calling me to change my life but I wasn't quite ready to, to give it all up and give it over to him. And I'll never forget, we were at, it was on a Sunday night, we were at a service at Cathedral Assembly of God, and um, I remember we had just started dating, just started talking, uh, hadn't been together very long, and she invited me to church, you know. And so I went because um, I wanted to, to get to know her better, and so I went to church. And I remember I, I had this in my mind. I said, you know, I, I'll go there, and I'll, you know, I'll do the little dance and play the part, but... But, you know, I'm just not ready to give everything up yet. And I remember I was sitting there and, um, you know, one of those services where the preacher is just talking directly to you. And I remember that the Lord just began to move on me. And, and I felt so strong in my spirit. I felt him speak to me and say he was calling me to the altar. And I, I, I was just holding on to the pew. I didn't want to go. And I remember hearing him speak to me and saying, Andrew, I'm not going to call you again. I'm calling you now. I'm not calling you again. And I remember I just, I felt this fear come over me, like, this is my chance to get my life right. And, man, I went to that altar, and, and I was broken before the Lord. And, and I can honestly say that, I, I can't say that I have just been the most perfect person, but I can honestly say that that was the, the catalyst, the changing point in my life, that, that I got on fire for the Lord there, and, and I haven't turned back, and I'm not going to. Amen. Um, so. Amen. And so let's, let's turn back to Stevie here. Um, I know you just mentioned a little bit about that and what you just shared, but you didn't define the moment, the moment that you knew that you knew that you knew when you found out that that grace was, was there for you and it was a, a change in your life and you knew how to rely on that grace. What, what was the defining moment there for you? When I finally realized that the way I was living, I was going to go to hell. And my children watching me, could very well take them to hell with me. And it's my job to lead my family as well as myself. And I didn't want, I just didn't want that anymore. Uh, everything I tried to do on my own, I couldn't do it. So I just decided to give it to God and ask him for everything. And everything's been a lot better. And every, every, every day ain't been great, don't get me wrong. I mean, we've had some good ones and some bad ones, but it's way better than it used to be. I can remember just a few months ago before the coronavirus hit, and I, I made mention of this in service um, one time, but um, we had just went to Winter Jam and took a bunch of kids up there, and Stevie and Mandy went. They were trying to be kids again. But um, they went up there, and they wanted to be a part of that. And so, you know, we welcomed them to do that. And me being pastor, I was driving the van. Andrew scared to drive a van, so I had to drive the van up there. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, we were in that service that night, and it's, it's just music. It's just music going on, but ministry was happening, and it was a, a concert feel, but there was a, a, a ministry feel too, and, and anybody that was sitting within 40 rows of Stevie could hear him hollering. Yards. I mean, just, I mean, I don't know how many decibels he was hollering, but you could hear him over all the music and everything else, and, and I thought to myself, you know, at that point, I said, there's something different this time. Amen. Something different this time. When you can get out of your comfort zone and you can shake what you've always known and, and do things different, and when you can let the Lord call you to a different place, to be a different person, to do different things for him, such as just screaming, just shouting out, you know, just he, he sounded like a, a cowboy, you know, in, in the middle of the, the arena out there. He was just hooping and hollering. And I was like, there's definitely. And it wasn't a one-time occurrence. He did that multiple times throughout the night. And, I, I, you know, I said in my spirit to myself, 
I, I just said there's something different this time. Yeah. And so I've witnessed change in his life. Yeah. I've witnessed up and down, in and out. Some of you may know this and some of you may not know this, but this man has a call of God to preach on his life. He does. He's had it for some years now, 12 years. I didn't even know this until earlier. I knew he played the drums before. He said, yeah, we had a band. And I said, Stevie, we don't play that kind of music in church. And, and he said, no, we're not talking about that kind of music. Carla was in it, and Lori Fox Pool was in it, and he named off several other people that was in the band. And I was like, hmm, okay. That's been a long, <laughs> long time. But the foundation was laid. Because mom and daddy was faithful to church. It's always been there. So let me just encourage you this morning. Parent, this evening, I'm sorry. Parents, if you have a child that's away from the Lord and struggling, it doesn't matter the age of that child. It doesn't matter if they're 70, if they're three, if they're somewhere in between, if they're a teenager struggling. We see that all the time. And prayer changes things. If we could pan the camera over to see Miss Faye right now and see Mr. Jimmy right now, Lee and Dawn right now, you would see that they're here to support this man and his wife, Mandy, and their daughter, I forget which one because I get Haley, that Brother Andrew is going to baptize in a moment. And prayer changes things. When nothing else will Prayer changes everything. When you've done all that you can do on your own, when you've run the course of life yourself, when you've tried to do everything that you could do in your power and everything anybody else could do in their power, prayer changes things. It really does. I want to take a moment and just say a closing prayer. We're going to um, jump to uh, a a screen in front of you and we'll have some music playing and, and just hold with us a few moments. If you're a candidate for baptism, you can go ahead and get back there. Get your stuff ready, um, and we'll come back there and join you in a minute. Don't, don't come in the building. I mean, don't come in the door just yet, but just go ahead and get your towel and get everything ready, and we'll start the baptism in just a moment. You can go ahead and do that. Amen. And so one more thing, Brother Andrew. When you were called by the Lord, how did you know? that it was the Lord calling you? What, did you feel something? Was it an audible voice? Because there are some people out here, I'm sure, that are watching this and maybe even in the building that, um, that have a calling of God, but they're not really sure how to identify that and, and get started in it. So would you share that moment with us? Yeah, so I think it's, and it's different for everyone. You know, the Holy Spirit um, is the same spirit, but of course it moves different on everyone. But I remember... Uh, when I was called into ministry for the, for the first time, I remember I was 13 years old. I was at Camp Walkaway Springs. It was a youth camp. And I remember I actually heard the voice of the Lord. And, I mean, he, he told me he wanted to use me in ministry. He said he had a purpose for my life. And that was, you know, for me, that was something kind of hard to hear because, like I said, you know, I, I grew up in a very broken home, very broken situation. And for a long time, I had this mindset of, oh, well, I kind of got to be a product of my environment. And I just remember hearing his voice and telling me that he had a plan for me, that he was going to use me, that, that he wanted to do um, great things in my life. And so, and then throughout the years, um, I would feel things in my spirit, like, especially when I was away from the Lord, um, when I was running from my call, I would just feel things like the Lord was pulling me back. I would, there would be times where I wouldn't even be in church and I would feel such just extreme conviction over my sins and over how I was living. And so I think that's how, how I knew. And the thing is, if you want to know if God has a call on your life, you need to be close enough that you understand his voice. The closer you get to God, the more you pray, the more you get into the word of God, the better you're going to be able to hear and the better you're going to be able to understand what it is he's saying to you. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Like I said, we're about to go back here and get changed so that we can begin our baptism service. But let me pray, and then we'll jump to a screen with our logo and different things on it there, Um, something for you to view while we are getting ready. And we'll try to get that as quickly as we can. So please just bear with us for a few moments. Lord, we love you. We thank you for these candidates that we're about to baptize lord that means that they have given their heart to you and their life to you and it means that they are interested in serving you further so they're making a public declaration of their faith in you tonight lord jesus when we 
put them under the water, Lord. It's going to be an old man dying and, and symbolizing that there's a new man, a new being, a new creature in Christ. And so, Lord, when they come up out of that water, Lord, I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will overwhelm them, that they will love you deeper, that they will go after you harder, Lord Jesus, and they will dedicate their lives to serving you, God. Again, Lord, we love you, and we thank you for each one of these candidates. I thank you for these two men that are sitting beside me, Lord Jesus, tremendous men of God. And I pray right now, God, that you will keep us going forward and loving you better than we've ever loved you before, doing more for you than we've ever done for you before, Lord, looking for your return, but working earnestly to gather in the harvest on the way. In your name I pray, God. Amen and amen. she's not going to say anything, so I'm going to say some things for her. And, uh, you know, one thing that I want to say is last year I got to take Jay to camp, to youth camp for the first time, and uh, this year, you know, youth camp was canceled. But I remember so much um, watching her, just especially during worship. And, and, you know, the first night, you know, she was kind of, you know, she would go forward, but kind of reserved and everything. But but on into the week, I just saw the Lord just do some great things in her life. And, and her just moving in worship, um, moving in prayer, just the Lord doing great things with her. And so I want to say that I'm very proud of her. Um, she has an incredible heart, an incredible spirit, and I'm excited to be able to baptize her tonight. 
And so with that being said, are you ready? All right, Jay. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, you got anything you want to say? All right, again, we have another one that, that doesn't want to say anything, and so I will say some stuff for her. But um, Miss Haley, this is her. This was her first year being part of the, the youth group, and, and it's been a great just having her and watching her grow in the Lord. Um, and like I said, you know, this 2020 year has been hard for our teenagers. Uh, this is the first year since I've been a youth pastor. Uh, we haven't been able to do camp or anything like that. But I, I've been able to do Zoom meetings with these kids. I've been able to um, put stuff on Facebook and engage with them in text. And so even though they have all the excuses in the world not to be engaged with the Lord, they still are. And so that's, that's very exciting to me. And I know where her heart's at. And so it's an honor to be able to baptize her today. So are you ready? I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> say something about this one but you know this is this is my son and several several years ago I got to baptize my daughter and as a pastor and as a man of God and, and just believing in the Lord and what he can do in our lives it's there's no greater honor than to be able to baptize your child and so tonight um, Aiden knew that the baptismal service was happening and he wanted to be baptized and you know, Dawn and I, we sat him down and we made sure that he understood what it meant, that you're proclaiming that, that I want to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. And, you know, my biggest prayer as a parent is that God uses these kids. And so it is an honor to be able to baptize them. And we're excited. And so here we go. Aiden, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Lee, this is like a sauna compared to what we, what we did when, when y'all got baptized. All right, this is J.D., J.D. Chandler. Jade is his sister, and uh, he told me I could say something for him. Um, and I will say this. I spent a couple of years at camp with him, and every year at camp, it's like before breakfast. Breakfast is at 7.30. And at 6 o'clock, he's up. Can we go treasure hunting? Can we go? Can we go? Can we go? And I told he spent the night with us the other night. And uh, slept in, actually, slept to about 10 o'clock, uh, if you want to know the truth. But all the kids did. And I said, I told Sheree, I said, I can't believe he ain't up at 6 o'clock, 6.30, just bouncing off the walls. But he wasn't. But he's growing up to be a fine young man. I don't know him prior, prior to two years ago, two and a half years ago. I don't know what kind. I mean, he's a kid, so he's going to do some stuff. He's going to get in trouble. But he's growing up to be a fine young man. And he's made a... A proclamation that Jesus is Lord. I've watched him at the last couple of camps get into the services. If you saw him this morning in church, he was over there worshiping, lifting his hands up, and he's not scared to get in with God. And that's what I, uh, one thing I love about him. And so, um, Jay, uh, not Jay, you're JD. JD, you ready? All right, hand over. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Good job, buddy. 
Fun fact, I dropped him earlier in the hallway when we were trying to do a trial run. Yeah. All right, Mandy. We're not professionals, in case you noticed that. Um, this is Mandy. This is uh, Stevie's wife, sat here to my left when we were doing the interview. And uh, let me just say this. Stevie talked about how he was in and out, in and out, hot and cold, hot and cold. Well, Mandy was the same way. And that's not, I'm not saying that as a knock against her. What I'm saying is, is a proven fact that when the man gets saved, and he leads the way, his family will follow. And this time, it stuck. She's given her heart to the Lord. I've had a conversation with several people that know her very well, and they can all say that there's definitely a difference in Mandy. It's not the same one. And so we're all on different journeys in our walk with the Lord, and she's on her own journey. But she loves the Lord, and she's trying. She's really trying. She texts with Sheree a lot back and forth and, and you know, asking for prayer for this or that or the other. Or sometimes it's a, hey, we're having a good day. Stevie's doing so good. He's not mean to me tonight. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's very encouraging to see her grow in the Lord. And so uh, don't nobody call the sheriff for me. It ain't nothing like that. I'm just, I'm just joking around. Um, but we love Mandy. We love Stevie. We love their whole family. Um, and so, of course, we, we love all of our church family, but uh, we're, we're definitely proud of Mandy and how she's progressing in her walk with the Lord. So, Mandy? As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. It's not bad at all, I promise. Lee, you're going to want to come get in later. <laughs> all right, I don't think Christina's going to say anything either. Christina is Matthew's wife. He went off to work and came back home with a wife. But she actually made it here before I made it here. And the difference that I've seen in her life, um, she's faithful to come to church. And she is faithful to seek out the Lord. Uh, she came from Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. And so the religion over there is very different. It's really non-existent. Christianity is not existent over there. So when she came over here, it was a new life. Everything started. You, you can see her whole world was turned upside down. And so the progression that she's made to be where she is today, standing in this baptistry, having given her heart to the Lord, is a miracle in itself. And so I praise the Lord for her. I praise the Lord that she is interested and God, I praise the Lord that the Lord has spoke to her in a dream the other night, and she can tell you about that later. I'm not going to get into that. But the Lord spoke to her, and we discussed that this morning, and, and I believe that God has great, tremendous things that he wants to do with her. And so, Christina? Minister of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, Christina, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. She didn't trust that I was going to get her back up. She's ringing out. Amen. Who's next? Lee, we need some backup. Big Daddy's going down. Steve is 
about said all he's going to say? No, I'm going to say something. Oh, he's going to say something. <laughs> Go ahead. I just want to say that this right here is a public declaration, and I am a changed person. That does not mean that I'm not going to do something wrong from time to time. So don't condemn me. Love me. Amen. Amen. Stevie. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> As always, there's water on the floor. Sometimes big boys make splashes. Amen. Amen. So we love you. Thank you for joining us online. Thank you for family for showing up and supporting them in this time and special occasion in their life. We love you. We're praying for you. And we can't wait to see you next Sunday morning, 1030 in the gym.